Welcome to Tales of Ted DeGrazia, a Big Blend radio podcast covering the art, life, and career of Southwest artist Ted DeGrazia, as well as the current events and exhibits happening at DeGrazia Gallery in the Sun. It's a 10-acre National Historic Landmark located in Tucson, Arizona. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Big Blend Radio's Tales of Ted DeGrazia show. And you know, Lance Labor, the Tucson dude, is back on the show. He is the executive director of DeGrazia Gallery in the Sun in Tucson. And he is here today to tell us a little bit about uh, Ted DeGrazia's birth anniversary party. They've got a new exhibit coming out. Well, it's actually out now when you hear this. And um, we're also going to revisit some of the newer exhibits that are up now. One is Rodeo and one is DeGrazia's Master of Arts thesis painting. So welcome back, Tucson Dude. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me. Hey, so is it warming up in Tucson? Uh, Without a doubt, yes. It's starting to get summertime. Um, Ah. I'm sitting outside and it's probably already 90 degrees. Wow, wow, this is wild. It's already getting warm. It's it's heating up for when Nancy and I visit in July. If we're coming out in July right. cuz you know, we want monsoon season. You know we love monsoon season. Yeah. So, yeah. but it's it's a beautiful time of year May in Tucson because there's like uh, there's a lot of later cactus that bloom and I know you have the cactus corral at the gallery, but also the saguaro blossoms start. So this is a beautiful time to visit, I think, personally. I like May. In, yeah, in no, it, 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 spring is springing, and things mm. are starting to bloom, and the desert's starting to look beautiful, and um, lots of flowers. It, it's really nice this time of year. I love it. I love it. So let's before we get to the new exhibit, which I'm excited to talk about, because it's another new topic, right? Where there's always something... I'm going to say there's always dirt on DeGrazia, and I don't mean it in bad dirt. I mean good dirt. But, like, he's always got good, you know, there's good stories. Um, But you've got up now, I know the Way of the Cross is down. The new exhibit, which we'll talk about in a second, is DeGrazia's textile designs for Fuller Fabrics, not Fuller Brush, two different companies. And um, But what's up right now as well is DeGrazia's Master of Arts thesis paintings. And this is from when he was teaching at U of A, right? Well, no, he was. It was actually when he was going to school. He was doing his master's, and uh, this was his master's thesis. Um, he painted around twenty or thirty paintings. Um, it was um, his his subject was the relationship of color to sound. Um, mm. in, in art education, and he would play classical music. Shostakovich, Brahms, and then painted. Uh, and he did about uh, 15 oils, and he did probably another 15 watercolors, and uh, they're really interesting. And uh, so that's what's on display right now. And also Rodeo, and that's a series from 1954, oil paintings, right? And that's inspired by the yeah. Tohono O'odham Nation Rodeo and Fair in Cells. And Cells is what, just kind of southwest of you in Tucson? Uh, yes, yes. Cells is about, uh, I don't know, maybe 35 miles mm-hmm. from Tucson, 30 miles. It's not very far, but it is south, and it's the Tohono O'odham Indian Reservation. Mm. And so that's so that's about their rodeo, which is a little bit different, isn't it? The, the Native American style of rodeo versus um, well, or, not really. I mean, it's a it's a rodeo. They do all the regular events, you know, bull riding, roping, calf roping, all that stuff. But uh, they do it yearly. And uh, De Grazia was a tradition. He used to just go and um, go and hang out and watch the rodeo and hang out with the cowboys and. Um, you know, mm. it was one of his one of his uh, annual things that he liked to do. Now, the new exhibit is out now on display um, and through well, the one rodeo is on display through September. And so is DeGrazia's Master of Arts thesis painting. So, like, you know, you got to do this now. <laughs> You're running out of time to see these two. Oh. So Nancy and I will get to see him when we come in July. Um, but in um in regards to the new exhibit, this will be on display through January 2025. And this is Ted DeGrazia's textile designs for Fuller Fabrics. So 
What do you think? Fuller brush and fuller fabrics were connected. I don't know. Just, yeah, th- this uh, was there I, in New I, York. I, I don't hmm. think so, but okay. I, I don't really know. Uh, I don't but know. Uh, De Grazia uh, would do uh, these big uh, fabric patterns and designs, and they literally sold thousands and thousands of square yards of this stuff. And, um, you know, they were, um, they made dresses, they made skirts, they made, uh, they made women's clothing. And, um, uh, you know, even at, at two cents a yard, whatever the is, uh, uh, whatever he earned from it, uh, they still made a fortune. They sold so much of it. Uh, mm-hmm. anyway, there's a lot of different. Uh, images and um, we we have a lot of swatches and things that we have framed uh, to put up and we have some we have some dresses and skirts and some really nice examples of of what they put out. Hmm. So this is something he did like what for four years he worked with them and so that was it's interesting because they're in New York and New York State I know. You know, New York, like the East is always interested in those Southwest. There's always been that, you know, hey, we want to go to the desert and have the big open skies. And it's just, you know, and a lot of artists even move to the Southwest because of the weather and the lighting and the drama of the scenery, you know. Um, but I think that's really kind of it had to be interesting for a company that was back back East in New York to be able to like, hey, we've got the South, the Southwest print. Um, that's got to be something special for them to have. Something yeah, different. I think also, at the, I think at that time, uh, and you know how it goes in cycles. I think the uh, the Southwest, Southwest decor, you know, the whole thing was Route sixty six, Route sixty six, uh, yeah. all of that. Mm-hmm. They, it, it was, you know, uh, people people wanted to to put Southwestern stuff in their house, you know, and it changes and things things uh, change over time. But mm. uh, back then it was it was big, and um, he hit it right about the right time. His, and it's kind of coming back. This, uh, it, it's kind of coming back now. Textile designs like that are coming back. And Nancy was doing some, you know, she does a, other stuff in the art world, and she was just like, "It's back." The textile, because Nancy used to actually do um, painting on fabric. And do like whole paintings, like on fabric. And people would wear it as tie-dye skirts, not tie-dye, what do you call them? Wrap-around skirts and things. And she would do like, it, and it was a huge deal. This was in the, oh my gosh, 80s maybe? And um, it was a big deal. And then it kind of went away. And now I see it's coming back. And she was saying that now florals are a big deal. And be- it's just the way, I think it would have been really cool to see De Grazia now with the way the world is with the internet and how, how the production of art has gone so big, like what, what you have at the gallery. I mean, what people could go shop to their hearts content in the gallery or online, everyone, degrazia.org, check it out. I mean, for your home, your kitchen, for gifts, I mean, holiday ornaments, shopping, you know, Christmas in July, just saying. So don't you think like he, he saw that, that that could happen before a lot of people realized what could happen in regards to art being reproduced so well? Um, uh, he was really into reproducing his art. I mean, that's the way he made his money. And, and uh, uh, you know, he wasn't the first one to do that, but uh, he certainly did it. Yeah. And, and he was also, he was criticized for it, you know, uh, reproducing things and uh magnets and commercial stuff he was he was criticized for but um but, th- but he bad. also yeah he you did know, well he, he did well but he also you know, became like the most reproduced artist you know and at the same time made it that people could afford art and a lot of people couldn't afford like an original painting you know what i mean so it's i think what he did made art accessible to the masses which it, uh, and that, that's why he did it that way. Um, yeah. That's that's exactly why he did it. He wanted regular people to be able to have some of his art, uh, you know, without breaking the bank. And, um, you know, they loved him for that, too. Uh, people really 
really appreciate it. And, you know, to this day, here it is uh, 40-some years after he's passed, and um, it's the same thing. Uh, people are still coming in and loving his reproductions, and uh, and it's nice to see. I will say this: that uh, the younger the younger generation has been uh, coming in and paying a little bit of attention. So um, it's encouraging. That's nice. That's nice. I think I think we have gone through those cycles, like you're saying, of design, and now people want something that's more with a, a backstory and an experience. I mean, they because you can go online. Would you rather buy from something that's an artist and not some AI reproduced thing? So now we're in this weird world of AI jumping into the the world of the arts. And it's kind of freaky for artists and musicians. Yes, there's AI that you can use, you know, for a tool for things. But I think when it comes to actual art, people want to know an artist is behind this. It wasn't just someone clicked a button and here's, you know, fake art. (laughs) Did I say that? (laughs) You know what I mean? It's I there's you can do computer generated art that you're mastering, but there's an you have to know art to be able to do it. But you want a story, and DeGrazia has that. I mean, you, how many shows have we done over the years, Lance? He has so many stories, and that's what you want to have in your home is some a conversation piece that's part of an experience. And if you go to Arizona or the desert Southwest. You want that experience, and why not make it something that, you know, is yes, reproduced, but has a story and and has some kind of significance and tells the stories of the people and of the land of a, a region versus here's your you know really mass produced AI generated stuff that's fake art. <laughs> I'm going there. It's fake art. We don't want fake art. We want real stuff. It can be reproduced. Yeah. Yes. So, and that's the other thing on textiles. That's that stuff is totally reproduced. Like, but it's fake art too. There's, unless you have the textile designers behind it, like what he did. Did this kind of tie into? Didn't he have that that group of people that would help reproduce his art, and then it would go and be reproduced from there? Uh. I'm not quite sure I understand your question. You have, but, you have, uh, you have a, you had a group. He had a group of people that he would go. Here's the design, and then they would copy the design. Oh, it would. Oh, you mean his his guild? That's it. Um, That's the word. Yeah, yeah. No, they they did uh, they did reproduce his art, but they didn't. Uh, that wasn't part of the textile thing. Um, that oh, okay. was, uh, you know, it was it was things like. Uh, Bolo ties and magnets and anything that they could put his image on, um, but that that was a, a separate thing from the the, the textiles. Um, and he he taught them from that too, didn't they? Also, kind of learn through that by doing it. Um, yeah, but, I mean they, these these all all these people were uh, really good artists in their own right. And, um, um, you know, they, they just helped him, uh, uh, you know, spread his art around and, 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 and helped, uh, help him produce it and, and helped him, uh, get it out to the mass. Mm. Uh, you know, cool. These reproductions. So they, they we need to make him a fortune. Yeah, well, that's cool, too. When that all goes back into Arizona and Tucson, you know, when a dollar is spent, it goes right back into the community in some ways, you know, Um, and taxes. (laughs) Let's not talk about taxes. We know he didn't like taxes very much. Um, Let's let's talk about his birthday, because he turns 115 years this year. Like, that's his birth anniversary. Like, so he was born June 14th, 1909. He needs his own flag because it's on Flag Day. Does he have his own flag yet? We need to make oh, him a flag. We do, we, we do have a DeGrazia flag. It's, do you uh, really? <laughs> uh, yeah. It's been up for many years. Um, it's, it's his son sign. Uh, and, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's been hanging up uh, next to the American flag for you know, as long as I can remember. Uh, so, yes, he does has, uh, have his own flag. 
Wow, I love that. See, Grouchy didn't didn't leave much out. He didn't forget much. <laughs> That's cool, though, man. That's awesome that he has his own flag. I love that. So it's 115 years. So normally, is this what's going to happen? You normally have cake and ice cream. And I know even on your website, it says, while supplies last. So if you're like me and you like cake and you like ice cream, I say go the when when the gallery opens at 10 a.m., get there first, get the cake, get the ice cream, and then lick the rest of the cake so no one else can have it but you. I'm just kidding. But go there yeah. early. Well, <laughs> no, normally there's there's enough cake and ice cream for everybody to go around throughout the course of the day. There's not anybody that gets yeah. stiffed. Ah, so people can come to the gallery and you say that this is open to the public and admission is free for the day in, in his honor, too, which is really cool that people can go. And um, just to kind of regroup on that, can you tell everyone a little bit about where he comes from, where he was born? He was born in the little copper to- uh, copper mining town of Marenci, Arizona. Um, which is about a hundred and about a hundred miles, hundred and twenty miles north uh, east of Tucson, and um, that's where he got his start, and that's mm-hmm. where he decided at a young age he didn't want to work in a in a copper mine, and you know uh, bust his rear end through throughout his whole life. Uh, although he did that anyway, he was a very very hard-working man uh but you know he chose the right thing he chose art and um um, or maybe it chose him either way he was uh he was really good at it and um uh you know didn't have to toil and didn't have to toil in the copper mine all his life that's cool that's cool and what was the first painting he did was on a tortilla am i right because I always get this wrong, this story about the tortilla. No, um, I, I'm not sure what the first painting he painted was. We have two paintings uh, from 1925. Uh, so he was just a teenager. And, uh, you know, he was 16 years old. Uh, and um, so, you know, he, he started painting very young. And, uh, you know, pretty much had a good idea where he was headed in life. Mm. Uh, not you know not everybody not everybody has that confidence and not everybody really has that vision uh, about their what they're going to do in their life when they're that young and um, I think he had that vision and it was a huge vision you know he didn't just think gee I'm going to paint some paintings I'm going to build a giant gallery and I'm going to mm. fill it with my with my own treasures and. Um, I'm going to become um, very well known, Um, and he did. That's a good story, man. His story is incredible. So, everyone, the the birthday celebration again is Flag Day, June fourteenth, from ten a.m. to four p.m. Arizona time. Uh, So, go to degrazia.org for information. I know you have some things happening that may happen, may not. So, I encourage people to go to degrazia.org, sign up for the newsletter. You get email alerts of when new exhibits are happening, when special events like this are happening. And also follow on social media. You can keep up with DeGrazia Gallery in the Sun on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Um, So keep up with them there because they keep you up to date. And I just love following because they're always sharing, you know, different pieces of DeGrazia's art, which are always tied to some fascinating story. Because I said that he's like the, the wealth of stories. And he was an incredible storyteller, too, because he's got books and um, he's a storyteller as an artist. And always fun having you on the show, Lance, to keep up with all these stories. Thank you. Hey, you know, can can I mention something Um, before we go? I want to mention to anybody who uh, pays attention to Facebook. We've been having a a little issue with our Facebook account uh, in the last couple of months. And don't I, I don't want people to give up on us. There hasn't been any posting, uh, but it's a technical problem, and I don't want people to think that we just dropped it. Uh, okay. So uh, I just wanted to mention that that uh, yeah, to hang in there with us and be patient, and Facebook will be back. Yeah, we went through that. I mean, everyone does. 
at some point, I mean, I got hacked once and it had nothing to do with anybody or anything. And they took over my account and that was that. And then we had to start over. Yeah, but and, it ha- and they're not, they're not, I hate to say it, but they're not very easy to work with. No. And, and they, yeah, they, they don't, uh, they, they're not very helpful. So no. uh, <laughs> anyway, we're muddling through this, but we'll be back. So uh, just wanted to mention that. Awesome. Awesome. I love to hear that. Well, Lance, have a wonderful weekend. Uh, everyone, this is, you know, on Memorial Weekend, we're airing this, but you can listen anytime on bigblendradio.com. But again, go to degrazia.org. And that's why it's always good to go sign up for the newsletters, too, because, you know, social media, we sometimes miss posts, you know, as we do that. And sometimes we all take, you know, necessary social media time out. Um, which is fun to do, (laughs) actually, you know, step back into the real world. And um, so, again, the newsletter is a really good way to stay up to date with uh, DeGrazia Gallery in the Sun in Tucson, Arizona. Thanks so much, Lance. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye, Nancy. Bye. (laughs) Thank you for listening to Big Blend Radio's Tales of Ted DeGrazia show. This show airs every fourth Sunday. Learn more about DeGrazia Gallery in the Sun at degrazia.org. Follow the show at bigblendradio.com.